good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to uh, United Kingdom Talk. It's November the 30th, Saturday, November the 30th, 2013. He says getting the dates possibly wrong this morning. And especially a very, very good morning, or good afternoon, rather, to anyone listening via Fenland Radio, up to north. Up to north, and we're just trying a little experiment uh, uh, for an hour today to see if we can uh, uh, be sort of rebroadcast on Fenland Radio as well up north. We've already got a, a few people written in this morning. Good morning to Danny in Wales. Good morning, young Danny. In we- in Wales, Wales, in the valley. Are you actually in the valley or not? I don't know where you are. To be at Wrexham, is that in the valley? In Welsh Wales? Is it still open, Wales? Can people still go there? You have to pay to get in, don't you? You go on this long bridge from uh, Bristol. Now, what's that bridge called? I can't remember for the life of me what it is. Some bridge in Bristol. Anyone know what that's called? The what? It's not the Humber. That's the one up north. I don't know geography, dear. No idea with the geography. Yes. Um, So, good morning to Danny who says he's going to be making a trip soon to London. Oh, you'll have to come to one of my many events down there. I have a sing a bit of karaoke. Can you sing? Welsh people are very good at singing. The Welsh choirs and the miners' choirs and all that. We've seen them all on the telly winning endless competitions. Endless, endless competitions. Hymns and carols. Well, it's the perfect time for you to come, Danny. You know, you could join one of the many, many carol services in London. Perhaps you'd like to come to my school, my old school carol concert which will be on uh, December the 20th at the Brompton Oratory Church in Knightsbridge. Oh, you won't be able to get in, dear. No, 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 no. You have to have an invitation or you have to ring them up and get on the guest list. You just go to the door and say, oh, uh, yes, what's your name, please? Chris Reardon. Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. Sorry to have asked. I'll take you to your seat. And they just take you up there. It's fantastic. I do love a carol service. Can you sing, Danny? Can you sing anything? Do you have any talents at all? Is there anything you can... No, no. Oh, well, that's one of those things, isn't it? Never mind. Anyway, good morning to Danny. Uh, Good morning to Wendy, who's with us this morning. Good morning, Wendy, who says... Good morning, Chris. Got my tea and Sarni. Sarni? Oh, I suppose it is lunchtime, isn't it? You see, I've just had breakfast. A bit of a long night last night, yes. I finished working at the uh, the Black Cap in Camden at 3 a.m., but I had a bit of a chin wag last night, so I got out of there about 20 past three. Got back here home about 25 past four. Uh, what? There's some reason I didn't go straight to bed last night. I can't remember why. Um, I had a cup of tea and... Oh, that's right, because I've got a new slow cooker downstairs. Do you like slow cookers? Have you got one, Wendy? Oh, they're marvellous. All you have to do is put all your stuff, anything you want cooked, you, you chuck it all in there the night before... Right. And turn it on. And that's it. Don't really need to stir it or do anything. And then kind of for the next lunch. So generally I put things in the slow cooker about 10 or 12 hours, something like that. You switch it on and you leave it. And in in the next afternoon, your dinner is done. And I made chili con carne, but without the con carne, because that's the beef. And I'm vegetarian. So no meat for me. I I used corn instead. Put it all in the um, in the slow cooker. Turned it on and it was ready. And for the first time ever, I used real chilies. Now, usually I use chilli powder. And I was talking to uh, a young chef called Ian, who works at the place I do the quiz. I do a quiz night at uh, the Mayflower in Rotherhithe, London, every Tuesday night, 8.30 to 10.30. Not this week, though, because I'm, I'm going a, a mini holiday tomorrow, a mini holiday. Um, I was talking to the chef, and I said, oh, I've got this slow cooker. And he says, oh, what do you do in there? I said, well, I've done um, uh, stews, I do chilli. He said, oh, what, what do you put in the chilli? I said, well, I actually put in a carrot, um, corn, uh, loads of tins of chopped tomatoes, um, what else, uh, pepper, loads, I, I do put a lot of garlic in stuff, but for some reason it doesn't smell on my breath. You know, no one's ever said to me, oh, you know, when you go and talk to someone, like, <laughs> and they suddenly take a step back, don't they? You know what I mean? Because, <laughs> because your breath is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> they come up to me while I'm DJing sometimes, and it's always the same ones. I mean, what do you say? You know, can can you go up to them and say, 
I'm sorry, mate, you got bad... I mean, I, you, you can't get it. They'd never come back again. It's even like some people um, uh, that I work with, I gotta say some of them have bad breath. You can't tell them, can you? You can't. You just sort of kind of take a, a little bit of a step back and, and hope for the best. Do you do... <laughs> <laughs> do you do the same? Anyway, so the garlic doesn't seem to affect my breath at all. Anyway, so I had about... There must have been about eight or ten cloves of garlic in this in this slow cooker. It's, it's quite a large one. It's 6.5 6 litre. Morphe Richards. Morphe Richards it is. So I've done this dinner, and um, that's why last night... I came in because it had all cooled down. I'm shoveling it in these little little glass things with plastic tops to put in the freezer. Because when I do a lot of food, I like to do a lot and then freeze a load. Do you know what I mean? Rather than do a small one, just chuck it all in there and do it. Well, unfortunately, the reason I've got a new slow cooker is because I mucked the other one up. What happened is that I overfilled it. OK, so in the morning, there was a little bit of... A, and and I, I was aware of this. So I put a, a, a tray underneath the old slow cooker, right? And the stuff had bubbled over me. And I thought, oh, that's OK, I can wash the tray out. But when I lifted the thing inside, because these slow cookers are like a metal outside and inside is like a ceramic, uh, large kind of bowl type affair. You know what I mean? Um, when I lifted it out, I noticed some of the uh, gravy, liquid, had gone into the metal bit. So I thought, oh no. So I got this scourer thing, you know, plastic scourer thing, scrubbed it. Nothing was coming off. I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll pour water into it and leave it overnight. Right? So I've poured water into the metal inside bit, not thinking about it, of the slow cooker, and just left it in the sink overnight. Next day, my friend came over, my best friend, Ron, right? And um, I said, oh, I said, I'm just going upstairs. He said, what's this in the sink for? I said, oh, it's soaking. And he said, well, why have you put water in this? I said, well, to soak, because it's burnt on. Anyway, so I came upstairs and I heard water go downstairs. So it was like, obviously pouring it out, right? He says, Chris! I says, what? He says, you better come down, come and have a look at this. So I went down and had a look. He says, what? He said, look. So I looked, and there he was holding my slow cooker. I said, yes. He said, you're not supposed to put water in it. I said, well, it'd be fine. I've done that before. He said, look at the outside of it. And at the outside, where the bottom joins the side, it's all gone rusty. <laughs> So that, another gadget ruined by Chris Reardon. I'm not happy about that because my niece bought me that a little while ago. About two years ago at Christmas. And I do use it quite regularly. Mainly to do, as I say, the only two things I've really done in there is chilli chili and, um, and, uh, and, and corn stews. So that's why I've got a new one. You see, and for the first time ever, I put real chilies in. Usually, I put chili powder in, but when I was telling Ian the chef about that, he kind of stuck it. Oh no! I said, "What?" He said, "Not chili powder." I said, "Well, what's wrong with chili powder?" He said, "No, fresh chilies. You got to put fresh chilies in, and don't put any more than one in." I said, "Oh," I said, "Do they get really hot?" He said, "Yes." Do not put any more than one chilli in. So I came home that night before I was going to make it. And I went to Asda on the way home because we've got an Asda. Well, not here, but in Roehampton. I can drive through Roehampton and get all the stuff from there. So I've got all the stuff you know, about one o'clock in the morning. Oh, it's fabulous. Do you ever go in the supermarket at one o'clock in the morning? Oh, it's wonderful. There's no one in there. No one in there. Just some, some reasonably happy person on the till. I mean, when's the last time you saw happy people on the till in your local supermarket? I mean, we get it in Waitrose. They're always very happy there. They're the worst ones at Audi. Oh, Christ, they're miserable as sin. Miserable as sin. Don't go in an Audi and expect people to be happy. Hello, sir, how are you? <laughs> nothing like it, dear. Absolutely nothing like it at all. Right. Um... It's true. 
miserable sin. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. So he said, so I went to, I said, and I got this little packet of chilies. And they were, I think, one pound, one pound twenty or something, a pound perhaps. Or and there were four chilies. And I thought, blimey, they're a bit small. Anyway, so I got the stuff home, started chopping it all up, put it all in, and then it came. I thought, I'll leave the chilies to last, you know, and it's gradually filling up. Got the onions in there, the uh, red kidney beans, and all that business. Gradually filling up. And um, I've opened this packet of chilies, and I thought, well, they're tiny. I said, surely, you know, and I looked at the size, six and a half litre slow cooker, and I looked at these tiny chilies, and I thought, I'll, I'll put two in. You know, and I read the packet, and I remember my sister telling me um, to look on the front of the packet, and there's, like, pictures of chilies on the front. And depending how many chilies are on there, it indicates to how hot the chilies actually are. You ever heard of anything like this? I have no, I haven't either. Anyway, so I, anyway, so I chopped one up. And then, then I read, I, I, I come upstairs, put the computer on, how many chilies? And it said, and I remember it saying, well, it depends on the strength. There are hundreds of different varieties of chilies, or, or, or a lot of varieties of chilies. And they're all different strengths. I mean, it's very confusing. Very confusing. But then I read, if you take the seeds out, they won't be as hot. So what I did is I took out one chilli, chopped it up, and uh, put the whole thing in. And then I took another chilli, sliced it open, took out the seeds, and chopped that up and put that in. And then I washed my hands in soap and water, because you don't want to be rubbing your eyes after you've touched one of those. You will die. Well, possibly not die, but you'll have you'll have a really sore eye. A little bit like those idiots. Have you seen them on those things on the telly like uh, Magaluf Uncovered and uh, Ibiza Uncensored? And what's the one on at the moment that's just come back on again? Oh, um, is it Magaluf? Oh, where where is it? Oh, there's a new one that I can't remember now. There's one on the telly, and basically these cameras go abroad with young people, and it shows you what they get up to. It's shocking. I mean, I was young once. We were never like that. They're, it's over. They're so drunk. These people are so drunk, and they get absolutely wrecked every day. Oh, oh Kavos. Kavos. That's the one that's just started at the moment. Kavos Uncovered or Uncensored or, or, or Sun Sea and Kavos. Something like that it's called. They are so drunk, absolutely so drunk, these people get. And they're, I, mean, I shouldn't really say this, they're doing it all over the place. Do you know, you know what I mean? They're doing it, it is sex. They're doing it all over the place. And I was never like that when I was that young. Were you? I can't believe you were. Anyway, so what they 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 get this vodka they put this vodka in a little shot glass and then they put it i don't know if they put salt or lemon in there as well and then as a dare or as a, as, as a thing like to be part of the gang they then put it in their eye <laughs> what on earth is that about i don't understand why would you want to do that <laughs> All that pain for what? Oh, well, so after you put your chillies in, you wash your hands and in soap and water and all that business. <clears throat> and, and, it's, and it's all right. Anyway, so it went on. And in the afternoon, it was all ready. And I turned it off, put some on my plate with some chips. I know it should have been rice, but my mate came round. So he wanted some chips. I put some chips in the oven. Or he put the chips in the oven, actually. And I had chilli and chips. And it was just about right. Oh, my God, it was delicious. It was delicious, but in my new slow cooker, because the other one had rusted due to me not maintaining it correctly. What a shame. Good morning to you. This is a United Kingdom talk. Uh, if you are with us live, some people watch the show live or listen live. Some people watch or listen to a recording. Now, how do you know? I know it sounds stupid. Those of you listening to the radio will, of course, know that this is live. And you can join in live. I have two ways in which you can join in live to the show. I have my red phone standing by, boys and girls. My red phone is standing by if you want to call in about any of the subjects or indeed anything else this morning, you are welcome to do so. 
You can use two ways of doing this, either by Skype. My Skype username is, all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Okay, Skype username, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. You can Skype in or send a little message via Skype. If you Skype in by, by kind of call, then I will talk to you on the wireless. How marvellous is that? Or you can just send a message, it's up to you. There is also a local London phone number. Or you might want to, you'll, you'll probably have to add me to the Skype, but don't worry. If I see request for ad, then I'll click add straight away, all right? You can also phone in. There is a local London number. This is not a premium rate number. It's a local London number. And the phone number is 020 OK. They're the two methods to use if you're listening or watching live. And if you're not sure whether you're listening or watching live, then have a quick look at your clock and at the date. If it's Saturday the 30th of November 2013 and it's just coming up to 17 minutes past 12 in the afternoon, then you are indeed with us live and you can join in live, OK? The other way to join in, if you're watching or listening to a recording of this programme, you can email chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Thank you very much to Richard in London for rushing through an email to inform me the bridge from Bristol to Wales, to Wales, Wales, is indeed the Seven Bridge. Why is it Seven Bridge? Is there seven lanes? Why is it called Seven? I'm not quite sure. So thank you very much to Richard in London for informing me of that information. It's the Seven Bridge if you want to go to Wales. And I'm sure you have to pay something like a fiver to get into Wales. They do let you go for nothing, though. So that is something, let's be honest. It's a beautiful place, Wales. I did go out with someone actually in Wales once. He was from Newport. My God, that was rough. Ha! Huh, it was worse than Croydon. You ever been to Croydon? Do you know they are going to have a big Westfield shopping centre in Croydon? Yes. And apparently it's going to be even bigger than the Westfield, that the two Westfields in London. The one at uh, Shepherd's Bush and the one in Stratford. Brand new Westfield shopping centres. The Seven Bridge. Ah, oh, there he is. Danny from Wales. He's saying, just been rowing on the phone with a debt collection agency. That's not even me. Well, pay your debts, Danny. They're come for you in the end, dear. You'll be dragged out that house, kicking and screaming, and then you'll, you'll be on that phone. Hello, Chris. Oh, it's Danny. Could I stay at your house a few days? Oh, no. No. No, you can't. <laughs> dear me. Debt collector. Are you owing money, Danny? That's terrible. You mustn't owe money to anyone. And if, you, if you've got a house or, or a little room, Danny, I don't know what you live in. Maybe you live with your parents. When you get your own house and people say to you, are you ready for this? When someone ever, someone ever says to you, please, can I stay at your house for a couple of days till I sort myself out? Never, ever let them through that door because you won't get rid of them. It's happened to me three or four times. Not recently because they don't come. I don't let them in anymore. The times I've been asked that. Can I stay at your place for a couple of days while I sort myself out? You can't get rid of them. I bet there's a landlord or two or a house, not necessarily a, land, a landlord, a house owner or, 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 or even someone who rents a place who's listening or watching this show at the moment who has once let someone stay, quote, for a couple of days. And then they won't go. They won't go. And you start actually feeling guilty at asking them to go. And they can get quite nasty, you know. Oh, yes. And things disappear from your fridge. The worst thing is when you get up in the morning and you go and make yourself your cup of tea or if you're American, coffee. And it's all in a cup. The water is swirling around. 
The tea bag is in there, gently emanating its fragrance into the cup. And then you go to the fridge and someone has used the last of the milk. Oh my God, that, that just that really annoys me. And then you shout up this, and then they're, they're never up, right? You're the one going to work. They are still in bed. So you go out, knock on the door. Have you got any milk? Oh, I'll get some when I get up. There's no good then, is it? I've gone. I want the milk now, dear. Don't touch my milk. Please. Oh, Danny says it's not him who owes the money, isn't it, Danny? Oh, OK, then. OK, Danny. Danny doesn't owe the money. I'm glad to hear that. And don't borrow any money from Wonga.com or any of that little crooks. One million percent interest or whatever it is. I know it's something ridiculously high. Isn't it 2,326 percent interest on Wonga? Dear me. Good morning to uh, Matt Martins, who's in Canada. He's in Morris, Manitoba, Canada. Manitoba. That sounds good. Morning, Matthew, who says good morning from Canada. Wishing you and all of your listeners and viewers a fantastic day. They're going to have a fantastic day. I know it. I can feel it in my bones. We're all having a fantastic day today. We will. I promise you. One of my friends has just gone over to Canada. Uh, it was one of the bar staff who works in, uh, well, one of the bar staff and uh, reception staff who worked in Belushi's in um, Borough High Street uh, for a few months. And uh, I actually dropped him back at the air, uh, dropped him off to the uh, Heathrow Airport on Wednesday night. And he's over there in Canada now. Hope he's having a good time. Uh, Matthew also wants to know and sends in an email on your upcoming video, which uh, we are at that now. Uh, would you please include the mailing address, your fans, <laughs> fans, do me a favour. What fans? Where are they? Fans, <laughs> fans send you things in the post. I haven't had anything sent in the post yet. Oh, I see what you mean. Uh, please include your mailing address your fans can use to post your lovely Christmas cards from Matt in Canada. OK. I will do that. Um, have you got a pen and paper? I will do that now, actually. Are you ready? Here comes the address if you want to send anything in for Christmas, little little Christmas cards or anything like that. Oh, that bridge that goes over to Wales is called the Severn Bridge because it goes over the Severn River. Thank you for the information, Danny. Actually, I was talking about Bristol. They were on the telly the other day. Did anyone see that programme about the, the traffic people in, in um, the people who try and who, who keep putting tickets on cars and things in Bristol? They're really, you do not want to stop on a, on a bus lane or anything like that in Bristol. Cameras all over the blooming place. It's awful. You haven't got a chance if you stop in Bristol. You really haven't. Do not do it. Take buses everywhere. It's called the Severn Bridge because it goes over the Severn River. Thank you, Danny, for that, for that information. And now, with your pens poised, here is the postal address for United Kingdom Talk. Are you ready? United Kingdom Talk. Care of. That's like C stroke o okay c stroke o the two brewers b r e w e r s 114 clapham high street london s w 4 7 u j okay once again that postal address chris reardon United Kingdom Talk, C stroke O, The Two Brewers, B-R-E-W-E-R-S, London, SW4, 7UJ, okay? That's the postal address. If you want to send in a, a little card or anything, of course, anything at all you send in, uh, card or anything at all, will be opened here on the show <coughs> for all to see. Um, now, I'm also doing something new now, boys and girls. 
Um, last Sunday, I started doing short two-minute videos. They, some of them are funny, some of them are me just chatting rubbish, but they're never longer than two, two and a half minutes, okay? And these are daily. I'm doing one of these little videos a day. And actually, a lot more people are watching the short videos than watch this long show, all right? Um, and I've done a, a, a few so far. So that's a daily thing. Now, the way you will see those is either on my Facebook wall, and my Facebook username is Chris Reardon UK. So facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. All right. Either join me on there or Twitter. My Twitter name is also Chris Reardon UK. So do a follow thing on there, Chris Reardon UK. And whenever there's a new video, I'll put a link up there. Or on YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. All right. They are daily short two minute videos. Yesterday, I showed you how to make your very own comet. Oh, yes, boys and girls, because in the news this week, we have been so excited. I, I have been so excited. I'm, I'm a bit of a person that looks up into the sky and hopes that there is something better than this dump that we're living in now. I really do. I hope there is going to be something better. I'm going to look up into the sky. And I had heard over the last few weeks, they've been talking a lot about Comet Ison. Well, sadly, it's gone round the sun just that little bit too close. And it's melted. Although in the news yesterday, they were saying that they think a little bit of it survived and they are hoping within the next two or three days to tell us that we are going to be able to see something, a comet. <clears throat> Although it's not going to be as good as they thought it was going to be. They said it was going to light up the whole sky. Now, it's probably going to be a little bit faint, a little bit like me. I mean, I'm gradually fading, fading away in front of your very eyes, I know that. So, I did show you yesterday how to make your very own comet. As I say, if you want to see that, then the best place probably to go is the YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Subscribe to me there, and then every time I do a little video, you'll get a, you'll get a notification in it. And the ones during the week are only two, two and a half minutes long, okay? That, that's how long they are. And you should see a little playlist in front of you. Look for the one that says Friday. That's the one I showed you how to make a comet. And what else did I do this week? I talked about Doctor Who. Um, oh, I did did one with my mate, my mate uh, Ronnie. So it's all been very, very busy. The new short videos. If you've got any ideas for short videos that I could use, then send them through on the old email. Always pleased to hear your ideas and comments. Chris at United Kingdom Talk. dot co. dot uk. Chris at United Kingdom Talk. dot co. dot uk. Um. Danny wants to know, what are you doing for World AIDS Day? Uh, well, tomorrow, well, not, uh, yes, there, there is a bit of a, a charity uh, event going on. Tomorrow night, uh, World AIDS Day, I'm in the Black Cap in Cams and I do karaoke 8 till 10.30. And then there'll be a show from 11 o'clock raising money for um, charities and uh, World AIDS Day. All right. So I'm glad you're enjoying the short videos. And uh, people have been sending in little messages about the short videos as well. Oh, hang on a minute. Ma Matt wants to say something. Matt says, oh, thanks very much for the mailing address. A Christmas card. It's on its way to you now. Well, it's not actually on its way to me now, is it, Matt? You know, because you're still sitting there listening and watching this. But I do hear what you're saying. Thank you very much for bothering to send me a Christmas card. Because, you know, you know me. I don't do cards. Oh. God. I mean, my mum, and I've told you this before, my mum used to start writing her Christmas cards in September. She did. Oh, she was a wonderful lady. And she was always very concerned that people um, uh, would, would, would miss if she didn't send one. She was very, very thoughtful, my mum. She really was. She died in, uh, in 2000. Oh, I, do, I miss her so much. But I, unfortunately... I just can't be, you know, sending Christmas cards and it is nice to get them. But you know when you get those cards, especially from you, right? 
if you was to send me a Christmas card, I would, you'd be very touched because that's a lot of effort gone into sending a Christmas card to, you know, really someone, they don't know me that well, do you? You know, we haven't touched or anything like that, have we? We do like to touch sometimes. We like to touch people. Whenever I touch people now, I seem to get a slap around the face. I don't know why that is. It never used to happen. You know, again, going back to that programme I watched, um, I think it was on Thursday this week, uh, Whatever Happens in Cavos, right? There were young young men and young ladies snogging each other all the time. Every time I go for a snog, that someone's head go, uh, 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 their head goes back now. You know, and I go a bit further forward and their head goes back a bit further. They don't kind of, you know, when I was sort of in my 30s and I went for, a, you know, a, a little bit of a snog. The other head would come towards me and we would join and, and swap tongues. But now I go for the snog and their head goes back like that. Why is that? Very disappointing. They don't seem to have that programme on whatever happens in Cavos. <coughs> Anyway, so some emails came in, uh, some little messages about some of the videos this week. Uh, first of all, the video we did on Saturday, uh, Sunday last week, um, about Doctor Who. Did you see the last Doctor Who? Eh? Last Saturday. Oh, it was amazing. Really, really good. And the best bit of it all was Tom Baker at the end. He was only on screen for about two minutes, but it was it the way it was done was just so marvellous, and I was so pleased that they asked him to be on it. Tom Baker, one of the best Doctor Who's, uh, my personal favourite Doctor Who, John Pertwee. In the seventies, okay, he was followed by Tom Baker, so I have a great respect for Tom Baker. I even liked Colin Baker. A lot of people said Colin Baker wasn't very good. I thought he was all right. The, who was the American bloke? Paul M McGann, McCann, McGann, something like that. Is it? I, I don't know why, why they kind of bother even mentioning him. He only did one. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, what's the point of that, really? And I quite liked um, <clears throat> Peter Cushing, who, of course, did all the, the two Doctor Who Dalek films, which were really very good, weren't they? Anyway, uh, Mark in London writes, uh, Great to see Tom Baker on Doctor Who last week. Yes, it certainly was. Uh, Claire Tate. Hello, Claire who's in Manchester, said Tom Baker was fabulous, but I think we should have seen more villains and more old doctors. Looking forward to um, uh, PC. Think he will be great and prove doubt as wrong. Is that the new doctor? Oh, what's his name? The new doctor's name. Can someone tell me? Who's the new doctor who? What's his name? Oh, I can't remember now. Someone get back to me quick. The new doctor who? Oh, shall I, shall I type it in and find out myself? <clears throat> new Doctor Who. New Doctor Who. Ba -ba -ba. Da -da -da -da. Oh, hang on. No. No. Where is it? Fan unveils new Doctor Who. No. There he is. Oh, there he is. Uh, that's. Um, oh, I've got a picture. Pisa Capaldi. Yes. I think he's going to be a really good Doctor Who. I thought Peter Tennant was all right. I know he's the most popular Doctor Who ever, but then, of course, you know, that is, a, that is a generation thing. The generation of now will always relate to the Doctor that is on the telly at the time. Same as my favourite Doctor Who was John, uh, John Pertwee, who, of course, was in the 70s. Peter Capaldi. Thank you, Danny. Uh, but I get a feeling Peter Capaldi is going to be a really good Doctor Who. He's got that older... To me... Doctor Who can't be a young person like Peter Tennant and Matt. I, Matt, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I watched the programmes. They were all right. But to me, he was too young to be a Doctor Who. Too young. I like Peter. He's going to be a very, very good Doctor Who. And uh, so Claire Tater says as well. Oh, good morning to Jimmy Butler. Good afternoon, Jimmy Butler, who arrives home from work. Now, I have to tell you, Jimmy Butler is my nephew. 16-year-old nephew who came off his bike for, is it the second or third time now, Jimmy, hit ice the other night in the vo on the roads of Lincolnshire. Oh, hang on a minute. Danny. Danny is DJing in Lincoln. What club are you Dan uh, DJing in, Danny, in Lincoln? 
because that's where my nephew is, Jimmy Butler. He's only 16. Will he be allowed in there? I'll get you in. Get you in, Jimmy. Don't worry. Loads of ladies in there for you. <laughs> Jimmy's coming on holiday with me to uh, Disney in Florida in January. We're looking forward to that. Um, <clears throat> let me see. Have I got any more Doctor Who's? Yes. Uh, Marge writes, wonderful, love it. Loving the daily videos. And I love Tom Baker. I think he's very, very popular, Tom Baker. We love Tom Baker. Thank you, Wendy. Peter Capaldi is, of course, uh, the next uh, Doctor Who. Um, any more Doctor Who ones? Oh, Marge always also wants to know, how many hours does it take for you to make these two-minute videos? Okay. Um, well, it depends. It depends what I'm doing in the Marge. Uh... If I'm just sitting down, perhaps in here or in the living room or the one I was with Ron, a two minute video will take, are you ready for this? Not as long as you think, probably about five or six minutes. OK, so you make it, you edit it a little bit, you upload it about five or six minutes. A two minute video takes, although the one yesterday where I showed you how to make a comet. OK, that one took about half an hour. So that's how long a two minute lasts. Did you, did you see the one, How to Make a Comet? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, um, on, on the Twitter, don't forget, add me on the Twitter thing. Okay, if you add me on the Twitter thing, my Twitter uh, name is Chris Reardon UK. Right, let's, and I will put at the top of the Twitter, don't look now, because you'll miss half of this then, won't you? I will put at the top of my Twitter, uh, Fridays make a comet video. All right. There's the link. And that's now on my Twitter, right? So twitter.com. My Twitter username is Chris Reardon UK. They are just do a little follow thing on there and you'll be able to see the one where I show you how to make your very own comet, boys and girls. No need to be going out late at night. And craning your poor old neck, trying to see what's up in that sad old sky of ours. Do you see those little stars? I heard something very wonderful once. Uh, people thought the stars, someone thought the stars were windows on heaven. They are little windows on heaven, looking down on us all. How lovely. <clears throat> we also talked about Amazon in one of the short videos this week. And Little Gremlin writes, it's weird you mention that the delivery person put the package outside your door. Yes, I left to go to work one, one night and closed the door. And I just happened to look, to look to the right because I've, I've kind of got two front doors here. Look to the right. And there's this large package sitting there. And it was my slow cooker that I just ordered. They just left it outside the front door. No card, no anything. Right outside the front door. You know, not hidden. Anyone could have just walked around, picked it up and walked off with it. Ridiculous. And Little Gremlin writes, it's weird that you mention the delivery person put your package outside your door. It happened to me this Monday. This balmy idiot left a Blu-ray player outside the front door on the step. I was gobsmacked when I came home from the shops and they si and saw it just sitting there. When I got inside, the leaflet they put from my door to let me know that they had delivered the parcel had the box ticked. Your parcel has been left with a neighbour at number... Uh -uh, which was my house number. Raw mail were going, <laughs> going down the pan fast. <laughs> and that's from Little Gremlin. <laughs> I changed a couple of the words Little Gremlin there because we don't swear on this programme. We try not to swear, OK? <laughs> Thank you. Marge says my hair is looking better. Well, it's a bit longer now, Marge. It's grown. The only thing is, I told you before, because you grow your hair, and men all over the world will know this, the shorter the haircut, the less obvious the bald spot is, look, spot is looking. I'm just going to show it to you quickly. There's, there it is. OK, because it's grown a bit now, my bald spot is now very obvious. It must be shaved off again, number one quarter. 
that's what I go. So they say, oh, what would you like today, sir? Quarter, please. All over. Thank you very much. And it's only like, almost, it's so short, it just looks like dots on your head, the hair. <laughs> What's the name of the bar, Danny? Come on, hurry up. Um... <laughs> And then so Mild says, your hair looks better. And then someone says, someone else replies to that, what hair? He's nearly as bald as a... Well, I can't say that word. I cannot say that word on this family-friendly programme, especially not in hours we're on Fenland Radio. Fenland Community Radio. My name's Chris Reardon. There's an email address if you want to join in, whether you're watching live or you're watching a recording or listening to a recording, please send us an email, Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk is my email address. Uh, once again, if you're with us live, you can join in live either by Skype. My Skype username is all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N, or local London phone number 020 8133 Wendy says, the funniest part of your comedy video is you almost losing your trousers. Yes, that, that wasn't supposed to happen. You know, sometimes when you see things on the telly, like, um, what's that one where people send in, send in videos of people doing stupid... Oh, uh, you've been framed. Sometimes I'm watching that and you, see, you, can, you can tell it's all a bit contrived. It's kind of been rehearsed to happen like that. That was not supposed to happen. My trousers were certainly not supposed to fall down. Who wants to see this fat old lump... Uh, naked now anyway. No one. Thank you. No one. Even in the swimming pool sometimes, I try and go up there and dread, I, I dress from head to toe so that people can't see any flesh at all. Because I am embarrassed. I'm embarrassed, I am. Marge says, uh, your short shows are very good to take with vitamins. <laughs> vitamins? I don't know what you mean, Marge. Someone's calling in. Good morning, Danny, in Wrexham. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, sir. How wonderful to hear your voice. How is Welsh Wales today? Welsh Wales is good. Good, good, good. So what is this? What is the name of this bar you're in? It's called The Scene. The Scene. Is it small yes. or large? Um, it's got two floors. Oh, OK. Because Lincoln, I'm surprised it's in Lincoln. Wales isn't close to Lincoln, though, is it? It takes me about two and a half, three hours to get there. And when are you up there? It's Sunday? No, today, Saturday. Oh, what a shame. Because I told you I was going for a little break. Guess where I'm going? Where are you going? Lincolnshire. <laughs> but I'm going um, Sunday night after work because my sister lives in uh, Woodhall Spa, which is like a, 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 a little... Well, it's not a little village anymore. It's like um it's a large village now in um, in Lincolnshire, and I'm going up there Sunday night, so I won't get there till about five o'clock Monday morning. Yeah. Oh, so you're going to miss me then? Yeah, yeah. Are you only there for the night then, are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm going there and then coming back as well. We don't finish till three, so I won't get home till about six or seven o'clock. Oh, you're, you're driving home as well? Yeah, I always drive. I use. I always drive home after a job. I, I use, I've done jobs in Leeds and all over the place, even one in Scotland, and I still couldn't stay overnight. I had to come back after Scotland, and that's like twelve hours. How mad is that? The... <laughs> it's. It, it, sometimes I stay over, it, it, but um, they've got two shows on. It's like it's a World AIDS Day special. There's a yes. show on upstairs, right. and then there's a show on downstairs. And what, um, what music do you play when you're DJing, Danny? Um, camp, uh, charts. You do you, know, do you mix or just back to back? Um, I can mix. I mix generally when it's in like the later on in the night when yeah. it's like dance and. Yeah. 90s music and stuff like that. Yeah, because cause, cause it's all moved on from the, the days when I used to mix in the 90s. I can't do that anymore. They're, they're not interested. What they want is the three-minute version that they've heard on the radio or seen on the telly. Would you sort of agree with that? You know, when when they say um, Britney Spears, have you got any Britney Spears? And what was, that, what was the new work bitch? That's the latest yeah. one from Britney Spears, isn't it? Work bitch, is, that's what it's called. Um... If I was to put a mix on, I guarantee someone would come over, oh, have you got the original? And that, that's all it is all the time. So I don't bother mixing anymore. I just do back-to-back. -back. Same as you. There's some mixing. Mixing's good later on in the night when everyone's yes. had a few drinks. With a David Guetta. 
I quite like that yeah. one. Play hard, work hard, play hard, work hard, play hard. It's kind of repetitive, but it's a good song. Yes. I'm, I, um, at the moment, I'm loving the Fox song. The what? The Fox song. Fox. You know, have you not heard it? Oh, the, Fox the fo- song. oh, it's all. Over- I'm going to do a video with that actually. The Fox song. <laughs> it's just awful, awful. And there's a new version of Brown Girl in the Ring, I think. And that's like a Christmas Eve version. That. Oh, who's that by? Um, I'll look it up for you and then you can look look for it when I... It's got all, all bells and things in it like that. Uh, brown Girl in... Oh, let's type in a bit more. The Ring. S.P.G. Okay? S.P.G. Okay. Brown Girl in the Ring. Matt Pop. Christmas and it's all like you know jingle bells and all that sort of thing in there. Is it on YouTube? Um, yeah, probably. I I don't know. Probably. <laughs> I'll have a look. That might be one for you tonight if you like playing the camp stuff, dear. I'd love playing the camp stuff. I expect it's... you do. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going up there with then? Um, I'm going up with um, a drag queen friend um, right. who's funny enough in the show upstairs. And was it called so... again? This place. It's called The Scene. The Scene, and that's in Lincoln? Yes, it's on Newland. It's one of the main roads into Lincoln um, town slash city centre or what. Oh, I'd love to have a look at that. My nephew's watching at the moment. Jimmy Butler, do you know where that is? The Scene in Newland Road, Jimmy? He might have um, gone past it on his bike. He came off his bike again the other day, hit ice on the road. <clears throat> oh, it's just complete. It's just permanently cold up north. You know that, don't you? Oh, it's freezing. Yeah. Well, you're lucky. You're not in North Wales, are you, Wrexham? Yeah. Oh, my God. So, really, you're up north as well? Yeah. Oh, it's even worse for you because you're up north and a bit to the. Oh, no, you're west, aren't you? West. No, I'm right. I'm north. If you're looking at it on a map, I'm literally four miles from Chester, so I'm like four miles from the English border. So. Oh, okay. But you're west. You're west of the country, isn't it? Wales is west, isn't it? North, no, south. east. North, east, north, I am. East, south, west. North, e- No, isn't Norwich Rex- east? Norwich is east, isn't it? So north, east, Nor- Wrexham is. Oh, is it? North, yeah. east, east. Oh, I don't know. Like it's north, very... I got north, unclassified... West is Anglesey. I got unclassified for geography, actually, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> and music and re <laughs> e, e for maths e for maths i was Arts. very i was very good in school i was very educated was that have you got any what, what qualifications have you got there i've got gcse's right i've got mvqs what is uh, mvq that's uh is that a business thing that's like it's like city and guilds it's a right. new name for city and guilds and stuff yes. like that so you're a clever thing, aren't you? As well as a DJ, again, what's your other job apart from DJing? Um, I work for a restaurant. Um, I'm training to be a manager in a restaurant. You were in Asda at one point, weren't you? Say again, sorry? Were you in Asda at one point? Yes, that's when we last <clears throat> spoke. I was in Asda. Oh, we're not, not, not doing that anymore? No, no, no. I'm working for a restaurant <clears throat> now. I like Asda. That's my second favourite supermarket. What's it's your so first? Cheap. It's so cheap. Oh, Waitrose. Come on, Waitrose. Do you even course, need to ask that? Do you have any Waitroses in Wales? Um, we haven't, but Chester's oh. getting one. That'll be our nearest Waitrose. Oh, you're going to go and have a little visit in there. It's a completely different, different, different atmosphere. But I like Asda. It's so cheap. God, I, I couldn't believe how cheap it was in Asda. Um, one of the pubs sent me. They, had to, they, some idiot thought they were going to be clever and bought this um, rubber keyboard, right, for the computer, mm. and you can roll it up. Well, it only lasted about four weeks. <laughs> Someone was clever. So they sent me out to Asda to get another one. A keyboard. Five pounds. How do they do it for that? Five pounds for a keyboard. It's like bulk buy, isn't it, and stuff like that. So That's I probably, order it in for every store. So That'd be probably some poor little Chinese woman in China, you know, sticking these little keys on the keyboard for like, like 30 pence a week or something like that. Oh, something ridiculous! And oh. um, what's your what, what? Have you heard about this train uh, train crash? This um, helicopter crash in Glasgow? Oh, the one in Scotland? Yes, I have. Yes, it's a police helicopter <sighs> as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I saw. I was just reading this before I came up. Um, police, and it wasn't into a pub. 
I'm going to make... Yeah. Uh, well, get on the BBC one. Silly me. I'm looking at newspapers. Get on the BBC one. Get the proper news, dear. Um, <laughs> BBC, three people... Three people have died after a police helicopter crashed into a busy pub in Glasgow. How the hell did that happen? Must have gone wrong. It, it can't have been an error. It, it's, it's weird. It must have been doing, you know, the, you know, you, you know, when your police do the night patrols through the towns yeah. and cities and stuff. Maybe that's what was happening and they were having a helicopter. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. But, uh, um, yeah. They haven't got, have they got them all out yet? Let's have a look. I can't see. I'm not quite sure. No, but I know they were having trouble getting people out for some reason. Awful. Mm. But, um, yeah, so I'm in Lincoln at uh, the scene tonight. OK. We'll have a lovely time there, Danny. Thank you very much. I'll, she'll, I'll, she'll watch your weekly videos. I, I did like the, um, the, oh, the comic one yesterday. The little daily ones. Yeah, it's funny. You know, I, you know, if you sit there, I've noticed that, if you sit there and try and think of something to do, it doesn't come. It just doesn't come. Your what happens is you're at, a lot of the time in a swimming pool because I've I've actually just changed swimming pools because I got fed up with the Virgin Active. One. Oh nightmare! Oh god! Let me tell you, uh, last November, right? One that the, the yep. boiler packed up. Okay, for right. for almost two months after that incident, the pool was freezing. I mean, very cold, right? And I would complain almost daily about this. Not only me, you know, sort of relatively young in comparison to the elderly people that go in it. And they do these classes, aqua it's called, where they all go and do exercises in the water. They were really fed up. I mean, really fed up. This went on for two months. OK. Well, no, don't, you think, don't you think they would have got it sorted within like oh, a week or something? God's sake. Well, they, they kept telling me, oh, we've done this, we've done that. And then some bloke would come along with a thermometer and say, oh, oh, well, it's 27 degrees. I said, don't give me numbers. I'm not interested in numbers. It's cold. Yeah. Oh, well, it doesn't look that cold. I said, look, I've been swimming for 20 years. Don't tell me when it's cold and when it's hot. OK, if I go in there. On a hot summer's day, it will feel cold. But you know yeah. if it is actually cold. When you go in there on a cold day, it actually is really pleasant to go in there. And it was cold for two months. Like, so that's, that's like the coldest time of the year. November, December. I'm sure part of January it was cold as well. Eventually, they kind of got it sorted. Right? So it's not uh -huh. really been as cold as that again. But it's not constant. You'd be going in there ever since. Now, the first year I was there, it was fantastic. This is this is the Virgin Swimming Pool in Wokingham. First year was fine. It was always a constant temperature. So ever yeah. since then, it's been up and down a bit, up and down, up and down. Sometimes it's a bit cold. Sometimes it's all right. You know, sometimes it's just below all right, which is not worth complaining about. Um, all the staff are really nice. All of them, every single one of them, from management level. Right down to the cleaners. All nice people. But this problem just went on and on. Right? Not only that, ever since that incident of the boiler, the showers fluctuate. So you can be in there, and it's a bit hot, so you turn it down to sort of a little bit less, and then you're under it, and suddenly it'll go cold. Absolute nightmare. They got a spin dryer thing, so when you finish, you put your shorts in there, or if you're a fat, overweight, bald man, your, your speedos. Have you seen them? Oh, yeah. God. And I've mentioned this before. <laughs> what do they look like? People usually my age and a little bit of extra around the stomach, just like me, and they squeeze into these tight speedos. What do they look like? So there's oh, don't me. even go there. No. So that you never get the fit ones wear that, do you? Have you noticed that? I've noticed that. <laughs> so there I am. I take my shorts off. And you put them in the spin dryer, push the lid down, it spins them and they come out all nice and dry. That continually was going out of order. The pool side, around the pool side, for the last couple of weeks has been cold. So, you know, even if you're all right in the pool, which actually hasn't been too bad recently, but it's still not up to the level it was, OK? You come out and it's cold. And I said, to, I looked at these two boys, you know, who were sitting around um, uh, looking, what are they called? Looking after you. What are they? Lifeguards. 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 I said to the two boys, I said, are you two all right? Because I'm kind of sitting there, huddled up. I said, you cold? And they, they nodded their heads. And I thought, oh, this is ridiculous. You know, so I then wrote them a letter. I wrote a letter this time to head office. 
And um, I got a very nice reply. And they were, they were, I don't know if it's the way they're trained. Very nice reply. Um, I, I said, um, uh, you didn't even offer me any, a couple of months free membership or anything has been offered with all these problems. And then he wrote back and he had the audacity to offer me three free guest passes. Well, I haven't got any friends. Who's going to come with me? You know, <laughs> there's no friends. And I, I wrote back, I said, I'm very disappointed that you've offered me this. Uh, uh, and basically, I'm going to look. So I started looking, and I found one just up the road in the Hilton Hotel, which is £7 a month cheaper. Also, pay for six months, get one free. Bargain. And that was uh, off-peak, so I can use that Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. I've been going up there. Let me tell you, um, the pool in there, you get in it, you're not cold. You know, there's no... As you get in, you know that when you put your face, oh, it's cold. You, know, you don't yeah. get anything like that at all, right? Uh, and, and actually, after after 30 or 40 lengths, you are hot. You really are quite yeah. hot. But I'm not complaining about that. <laughs> and, you, <laughs> and you get out, it's not cold, and you get in the shower, and it's lovely. It's much, much smaller than the other one. Um, I think this one is 17 metres. Oh, mind you, the other one was, was 20. So... So not, not that much smaller. Um, but the, the width is a lot smaller. So if you was to have six people in there, you, 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 that's about the maximum it can take. But when I go up there, usually about 11 o'clock in the morning, there's no one up there. It's like two people or one person in the pool. So much, much it's better. It's ideal then, isn't it? Yeah. How on earth did we get onto the subject of swimming pools? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, you've literally got about three minutes left. Oh, yes. Look at the time. Three minutes left on Fenland. OK. Thank you, Danny. Thank you. I shall speak to you soon, Chris. Yeah, good luck with your um, uh, uh, entertainment this evening or tomorrow night. Thank you very much. Cheerio. I shall speak to you soon. Take Drive care. Drive carefully. Bye-bye, Danny. There Bye-bye. we are. Danny in Wrexham in Welsh, Wales. How wonderful. Yes. Uh, the show will be continuing, boys and girls, uh, because we've got a few more e- emails to uh, read out. But uh, Fenland Radio will be uh, leaving us at uh, mid midday, won't you? Uh, uh, at uh, at uh, one o'clock. Good morning to Merlin, who writes, looking good and sounding as good as ever. Oh, I'm not looking that good. It's a poor old soul. Are you, are you saying you fancy me now, Merlin? I am available. Just think we could we could forever walk into the sunshine, sunshine broadcasting, permanent little co-hosting things together. That'd be quite nice, Merlin, wouldn't it? Eh? Marge says, good morning. Marge says, I am the brightest star. Do you think so, Marge? So, Chris, I do not need to look into the sky. I just need to look east or west. You brighten the sky from the UK. (laughs) All I want to do, Marge, is make people smile or have a nice time. That's why I do the things I do. That's why I do this. That's why I do the DJing. That's why I do the quiz. That's why I do the karaoke. People who are concerned with money all the time. I just don't understand that. There there was one bloke who a friend of mine works for. And he says, you know those those videos Chris does? And he says, yeah. And he says, what are are all those about, those radio shows he does? What's that about? Does he get a lot of money doing that? He said, well, no, he doesn't get paid for doing that at all. Well, Well, why does he do it? Well, because he likes entertaining. Yeah, but why? Do you see what I mean? They just don't get it. People who are obsessed with money all the time. There's so many of them. So many of them. They don't see that by doing something for others should be done by not being paid. They just don't get it. And I think that's very sad. I really do think that's sad. So that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. Marge also says, hey, Chris, that makes me think those Chinese movies, we could pretend you're speaking Chinese. Yeah, because one of the one of the videos I had to redo because the, 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 the sound and the video completely went out of sync, didn't it? I remember that. Um, and she says, uh, well, it could have been a Chinese movie, you know, where, where the lips are moving and it's all out of sync and it's dubbed into English. Anyway, boys and girls, stay there if you're watching the video. If you're uh, listening on Fenland Radio, you're about to leave us. I uh, hope you enjoyed our little show this morning. Look up any of the old shows at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right. Thank you, Fenland Radio. It's been a pleasure. Bye bye.
All right. You're still with us, I hope, aren't you? There we are. Yes. So we've got another couple of uh, emails to do here. Ian Duff writes, Might have been better on the Comet video if your trousers had fell down before the demo. <laughs> no. no. We can't have... We, we, we can't have uh, naked people yeah, running yeah, all over all over my videos. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning. Who's on line 77563? Morning, Chris. Good morning. It's Terry Turner. It Terry is. How are you? Burger Turner. And tell me, Terry, is the diet working yet? Oh, don't be silly. Come on. Diet's <laughs> me. <laughs> I tell you what, I seem to be eating more and more recently. I don't know why that is. Um, I, I, you know, I keep going and say that well, I just get a few vegetables, you know, a few, a few, a few vegetables. Oh, I don't know. I just go over to that counter and then there they are. They keep putting boxes of cakes on special offer for a pound. Oh, it's terrible. Isn't <clears> it? And you know, oh, you know what I bought the other day? You know, Jaffa cakes. Yes. They've got a long Christmas tube oh. thing. Th and but there are five, bo is it four or five boxes in that? Five. Three pounds. How can you give up an offer like that, dear? Well, it makes me laugh. I actually seen something very similar for Gavin. Uh, uh, one of those tubes of M&Ms. Oh, yes. Mm, he was very partial to those. <laughs> what about you, Merlin? What are you partial to? <laughs> love, a good pe love a good penguin. Old, older, <laughs> older blokes, did he say then? Sorry. I didn't know that <laughs> Penguins and older blokes, that's right. Lime Regis. Where is that, Merlin? Well, I'm currently not in Lime Regis. I'm currently in hunting... Well... Ramsey, um, but no, Lyme Regis is in Dorset. Dorset? On the, yes, on the coast. Is that where you live? Um, at the moment, yes. <laughs> That's a wonderful part of the world, Dorset it's, and De Devon and Cornwall and all down there. It's, 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 like, well, it's warmer it's like, down there, isn't it? It's like, yeah, but it's like the retirement village. The what? It's like the retirement village. Well, come on, you're getting on a little bit now, aren't you, Merlin? I'm only 25. Well, exactly. I've got someone else that will say hello to you, Chris. Oh, dear. Who, who's this? Voice, How many people are on the line today? A voice you might not today? have heard for a long time. Oh, OK. Hi, Chris. Oh, hello, Gavin. I recognise that voice. Are you still burning the sausages, dear? <laughs> <laughs> I must tell you, I went round to meet all these people once. Oh, Christ, about eight years ago now. And Gavin was doing some cooking. And <laughs> we were sitting there in the living room. And he suddenly came out and he says, Oh, I think I've overdone the sausages. And out <laughs> came this grill. And these things were just black. <laughs> and none of us <laughs> ate them, except Gavin, who managed to eat them all anyway. <laughs> Waste not, what not. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I, did, I did ask Terry to look after them for me. <laughs> that's, the ex that's always been the excuse, Chris. Oh, that was the funniest thing ever that day. That really was. <laughs> we must do that again. I've also got Rob here. Rob's uh, our indie presenter on Fenland. Do I know Rob? Hello, He's a bit mic shy. Yeah. He's very quiet, isn't he? Hello, Rob. Come, come and sit. Come and sit. Come and In, Indie music, down. is it? What sort of? Oh. Is that like Blur and all that sort of stuff? What? What is? Um, can you give me some examples of modern? How old are you, Rob? Oh, well, I don't know. If I, <laughs> I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> are you young? Oh. Well, well, no. Well, 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 half a century. <laughs> half a century. Oh, well, yeah, okay. No, I was just wondering what, what examples of young, um, sorry, not young, uh, modern, like, new indie bands are. Because, of course, we all know the Blur and all that lot, like, that's all that indie stuff. Although, although you know, you could, you could argue that Blur is commercial, couldn't you? Because they made it onto the mainstream, didn't they? Oh, Terry, uh, Danny wants to say hello to you. Hello, da say hello, Danny. Oh, way, hello, Danny. Welsh, uh, I think Welsh I actually Wales. added him to Facebook this morning, weirdly. Oh, did you? Oh, OK. I, th I think so. A name I recognise from the past. So. Yes. OK. And Terry you know. H is with us in Leeds. Good morning, Terry. He says, I just tuned in when you said I'd just do it back to back. Which is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Is that in writing? I don't know if that's in writing. Marge says, I love the song, What Does the Fox Say song. Those guys are so sexy. You know, and all that business. We're going to do a little video like for that one at some point, I think. You're still very up to date with music then. Yeah, of course I am. I'm a DJ, oh. aren't I? You've got to be. You can't play what you want to be. If I played what I wanted to play, it would like be a Barry Manilow Abba night all night. That's what it could would you be. Could you teach Gavin that then for when he's on air? What? 
So you don't play what you want to play, you want to play what the listeners want. Oh, is that what he's doing? What are you playing, Gavin? Give me some examples of what was on your show last week. Last week? Um... Uh, how, 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 how did you do on the <laughs> listeners? Did you manage to get to one at all? or? <laughs> he had three. One was Terry, one was me, and one was the stream of the studio. <laughs> That studio stream. What well, has see, he been he really playing? He his hardcore dance, Chris. What has he been playing? Well, things, things like um, Ultra Beat. Yeah, Ultra, Ultra Beat. beat. And, okay. Uh, what pretty green eyes? Pretty yeah. green eyes. <laughs> Don't get him singing. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> No, don't start me off now. Don't start me off. Well, Terry, how did it go? Was it all right, your end? Um, it was all very good, but there's one problem. Yes, what? You you overran. Ah. As you always do. Uh, by how much? Well, quite a bit. Well, that that's well. What <laughs> but... time did it start? Because it was bang on. It was like fifteen seconds to one when I when I said goodbye to you. Um. Well, we yes. Well, we missed that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> But uh, I'm sure it, I'm sure it'll be absolutely fine. Huh? In fact, what we can do, we, we can try something. It, what time we, did it start? Well, it started dead on the hour. So we, we can, even you you took go... precedent over Sky News. How can it get longer then? <laughs> well, I thought you'd know that by now. Tardis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it must have come in a Tardis. Um, but next week, what we'll do, I'll, I'll send you some software to play with. Right. And uh, and we'll try that. Okay. Either that or, or, or I'll just stop a minute earlier. That might be an idea. Well, what, what, what would you rather do? Would you rather play? I know you like to play. Uh, <laughs> it's easier for me if you pick it up as you, as you did today. Oh, kinky. Just that means, that, about that means I've got to come go. into the studio. Oh, that would Terry's, be nice. Terry's angling for a day off, in other words. Yes. He, he wants a day off, does he? <laughs> right, Gavin will do it for we'll you. We'll sort something. We'll sort something. <laughs> nice to talk to you, Terry. And to you, have a good, uh, have a good week. All right, see you, Rob. Merlin. Right. Bye. bye, Chris. Bye bye. How nice the people call in like that. It's always a lovely uh, pleasure to listen to people chatting away and, and having a chin wag to us like that. Um, March says, would be neat if you did video calls to the callers to see their faces. You can do that in Skype. Yes, you can, but unfortunately, the camera I use to record this. Um, wouldn't be able to show it. So it would only be sort of on the live thing. Do you see what I mean? And, of course, the people listening as well, you know, they, they won't be able to see you. No, they won't be able to see us. Uh, incidentally, Marge, uh, you may be interested to know, uh, the short videos are actually done with the camera on my iPhone. I found that the best quality picture um, is, is the camera on my iPhone because the, the other camera I use, the video camera I use to record the long show, which we do on Saturdays, um, is just a normal standard. Uh, it's, it's Allegria FX 200 Canon. But it's not high quality, uh, high um, density. What is it? High, de high density? High definition. It's not a high definition camera, this one. All right. Um, let's have a look. Uh, more messages from the from the short videos this week. Brian Van Slotten says, "What an idiot!" Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I am an idiot. But if it makes people laugh, then I don't care. All right. Uh, we've got a, a little. Oh, one from from Mary. Uh, now, I bought a new cardigan this week. And you know I'm vegetarian and all that business. And I try not to buy woolen things. And Mary, Iris Mary writes, how many polyesters died in the making of that cardigan? Oh, I... Not many, I think. We don't like polyesters to die. It's cruelty against polyesters. It really is. Peter Sutcliffe. Is he the mass murderer? Are you watching as well? Hello, Peter. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> They're all there, aren't they? He says, uh, loving these daily uploads. Keep them coming. Thank you very much. Mr. Media Mate writes, Mother's Placenta. Now you're wondering what that's all about. That was on Monday's short video. Well, I read you the story about someone is making picture frames for their children out of mother's placentas. They put it in the oven, heat it up, or boil it and cook it or something like that, and then smash it into pieces and make a picture frame out of it. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, 
Uh, when we finish the show, go on to uh, Chris Reardon, uh, uh, the YouTube channel, www.youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Look for Monday's video. That's the one about the mother's placentas, all right? Um, oh, my God. It's my niece-in-law's birthday today, Stacy. So she must be very, very old today. I'm actually going to visit them. That's where I'm going for my mini break. Uh, tomorrow after work, I'm driving up to Lincolnshire, <coughs> which is about a two and a half hour drive. Uh, my friend Ron's going to stay here for a couple of days and look after Katie, the cat, as well as his own cats as well. So that's all very nice. Uh, I'm going up there because we're taking her children. She's got two children, her and my nephew. Um, one who's one and uh, one and a half and the other's about six or seven months old now and we're going to a, a, a theme park for the under 10s called sundown which i think is in northampton so we're taking the two little children up there on uh, monday and really looking forward to that and taking some photographs if i get some some photographs i'll be able to show those to oh no doubt someone will come up to us and say, oh you can't take photographs in here you know what they're like some bloody do-gooder would come up to us and do that, wouldn't they? So hopefully uh, that would be a nice time. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, Stacey and Gary and the two children, Evie and Harry, and my niece, Tracy, and her son, George, and my sister, Sharon, and it'd be wonderful. It's all going to be very wonderful. But it's Stacey's birthday today, so we must sing happy birthday. <laughs> To you, happy birthday, dear Stacy. Happy birthday to you. There we are, niece in law. Happy birthday to you, my darling. We've got a bit of audio this week. Every week, John, Cyber John, sends in a bit of audio. So here it is this week. Let's see what he's got to say this week. Hi, Chris. Aren't slow cookers brilliant? I made a lentil curry yesterday, and all I had to do was bung the ingredients in and walk away. It was delicious. And you know, I've never had any skin complaints, and I put that down to the old Indian stew with all that lovely vitamin-based goodness. Moving on, we've had a lot of Doctor Who stuff this week. Chris, please don't take offence, but could you try saying, Fantastic! Or... We have to reverse time and stop the Cybermen in a Lancashire accent. You know, there are some guys out there who make amateur Doctor Who vids. One chap I, I know, he made a, a Cyberman suit and was in a very early tribute film. You would walk into the Time Lord part. My mate the Bishop told me this week that I pray too fast. Fast? I remember elderly Irish ladies on a pilgrimage banging out ten Hail Marys before I could even do a Glory Be. You know, they did an MRI scan on a nun whilst she was praying and found that her brain profile was unusual, being similar to someone in a deep and calm trance, very much like that of a, a Buddhist monk. When the Holy Father visits countries, the crime rates go down appreciably. Now, I didn't like Benedict the Sixteenth when he was voted in, but his visit to Britain broke that down, and this new guy, well, he's just terrific. Anyway, Boris Johnson interview next week. Promise that. This is what happened on my trip to the south of Holland recently, to see the Globefest. In Eindhoven, home of Philips, you know, the light bulb manufacturers, they do an incredible festival every November. Let me tell you, November in Holland is very dark. It's seemingly more so than here, and they hold a magnificent ethereal and an eldritch light show across their city. The best luminescence engineers are tasked with creating static art shows, which surprise, delight, and scare the hell out of the million visitors to a town of only 400,000 people. I went there via the Harwich Ogvenite Ferry, which is brilliant. It's a romantic way to cross a thin stretch of water that Hitler never managed himself. There's a casino on board where wannabe poker stars throw their money away. 
the twinkling lights of England fade away whilst you partake in the offerings of the late bar, and the cabins are comfy. I took a very large pork pie with me, just in case, and unfortunately I brought it all the way back. It should have been impounded at customs and excise, as it almost walked through by itself after five days in the open. I got on a long train journey south, it seemed to flash by, which is good, because the Dutch landscape is flat and monotonous. The B&B I stayed in was a bit weird. There was a life-size statue of St. Benedict, but he was holding a spliff and had a hat made of feathers. The bathroom was decorated with pictures of well-endowed naked African men throwing javelins, and the owner had a classic painting hung in my room. Save for the fact that he had had the original 18th century lady's face replaced with his own. The light festival, which took two nights to take in in its entirety as it was spread across the whole city, was astounding. It made Blackpool illuminations look insipid. I cannot go into too much detail about the visual Sonne Lubier show, but I will try to describe a few choice experiences. Giant fish zeppelins glowed red and blue in the sky. An 18th century house turned into a chocolate box habitation by the ingenious application of a secret illumination technique, whilst the strains of Mozart's third violin concerto played in the background. A wall on which you could literally paint with light. A miraculous projection onto a high-rise building, which made you think that you were looking at it from inside out, and that was without the use of any of the infamous coffee shop intoxicants was a road on which were impregnated glittering diamonds which could not possibly be there. A tree made of light which pulsed purple, yellow and pink in time to music. Lasers played across the city heights, green and ephemeral, and in the nave of a church, skeletal images, bat shapes and skulls played on the mine. The masterpiece, in my opinion, was the turning of the front of the cathedral into a filmscape of an opening rose which underwent metamorphosis into the moon, the sun, and the winking eye. The Dutch do weird very well, and this festival appears to children as much as it does to adults. But you know, the British don't do weird so well, and the attempts to be a little outré in the Tate Modern are pathetic insecure reflections of what the Continentals are able to do with paint or sculpture, or in the case of the Glowfest of Eindhoven, light. If you want to see more of what I experienced, go to YouTube and put Glowfest Eindhoven, E-I-N-D-H-O-V-E-N, into the search function. And finally, Chris, I want to ask your listeners to do something. It will take a little time, but the surprise and the joy it produces are as magical as the Eindhoven Glowfest. What is it? Write a letter. Not a text or an email, or a Twitter, a letter. Take time and make time for someone. If you don't know someone who would really appreciate the effort, write to your favourite radio presenter maybe, or to your local supermarket and tell them what you think about some of the helpful and friendly people there who work long hours for not that much, and know for certain that your letter will be read and hopefully acted upon. That's got to be a wonderful thing. There we are, our, our regular little message from John in Holland. Thank you very much for that, John. I do appreciate your letters, um, your, your, your audio things. Sorry, there was a little bit of a, a pop on that audio there. I think I might have had that up a, a little bit too loud. OK, sorry about that, gang. But uh, yes, write a letter. Now, when's the last time you did that? Hmm? Write a letter. I'm going to do. There is actually someone I've been meaning to write to for years. Every year, without fail, she was one of my mum's friends. She sends in um, a, uh, a, a a letter, an email, and tells me what she's been doing, and I never reply. That's rude, isn't it? I must write her a letter for Christmas, I think. And uh, ten halved Marys fast. I know exactly what you mean. They can reel them off so fast, John. Thank you much for that, John. Uh, Going to wrap it up there, boys and girls. Thank you very much for joining me on our live show today. Don't forget, you can watch this show live every Saturday, the long show, every Saturday afternoon at 12 o'clock UK time. 
And you can find a direct link to watch it live by going to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. At the top of the list there, you'll see the direct link to the live show. That's also where you'll find all the long shows on there. You can also subscribe to Twitter. My Twitter is Chris Reardon UK. Twitter.com Chris Reardon UK. Facebook is facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Join us on one or two of those. And all the short videos, you'll see links to them both on my Facebook, as they, as they are done every day. Or on the Twitter, as they're done every day. Or the best way to do any of these things is to, to subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. YouTube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. If you write any messages about the shorter videos, they will probably come up on the long show. OK, I'll collect them all together and read them all out on Saturday. Anyway, you have a lovely weekend. I'm looking forward to seeing my uh, my, my little little children up north tomorrow. All right. And tonight I'm hosting karaoke tonight at a, a place in Hammersmith, the Lorry Arms in Hammersmith. If you're there tonight on this Saturday night, join us there between 9 p.m. and 1 a.m. Completely free entry. Thanks for watching and listening. See you next week. Bye bye.